my name is Mani Ganesan. I run the product management team at uh, Prosimo. Who is Prosimo? We are a three-year-old startup. This is our fourth year of existence as a company. And uh, we came out of stealth last year. So this is probably 15, 16 months out of stealth for us. Um, very large enterprises have started to deploy us. And um, we are a Series B company, raised 55 million uh, so far. And then the founding team comes from the founding team of Webtela. If anybody is familiar with the SD WAN space, um, there are uh, many of us are from the SD WAN space here as well. You kind of see that. How does this story of SD WAN extend into cloud networking? What problems we couldn't solve with SD WAN? How, does, how do they all make sense in the cloud networking world at layer three, layer four, layer seven? We're going to talk through all of that as well. Let me jump straight into the problem space. If you really look at the picture on the left here, that will look very familiar with many of you working with enterprise networking, right? This was our world a few years ago where Cloud was still this new thing, maybe a couple of regions, some DevOps folks are just tinkering with the cloud. Users on the left, and then maybe a couple of regions in the cloud, data centers, folks started to think of, hey, how do I connect my network into the cloud? Um, types of Direct Connect, Express Route, folks were going to Equinix, Megaport, and so on, to get that basic underlay architecture built out. Fast forward to today, when we have these conversations with the large enterprises, this picture has entirely changed. Now they're thinking in terms of, a multi-region framework. Hey, if I have five, six regions in the cloud, each one has hundreds of VPCs, hundreds of VNets, what is the security and governance framework I put in? When I say security and governance, even from basic connectivity, if they all have to talk to each other, are they even supposed to talk? What level of security policy you should put in place? And what is the right way to create a blueprint? That way it's not random VPC showing up and joining your network and then you're figuring out why is this VPC talking to my network now? So that is a reality everyone's grappling with right now. And then with regards to the tool sprawl, now we, when we talk to enterprises, it's kind of a mix of everything. Some are going with the tools that they're familiar with. They used to operate the data center network. They understand uh, the appliances they owned and managed. So they're taking the virtual appliances to the cloud and say, hey, I'm going to start my networking with that. Maybe a virtual router, a couple of virtual firewalls. I'm going to create some VRFs and segments. That's my way to operate. That's one bucket. And then the second set of folks, they go all cloud native, right? We like cloud native, whether it's transit gateway from AWS, cloud van, an Azure virtual van. And then they try to build this DIY network based on all cloud native. But once it gets to a certain stage, these are tools. These are just tools that are given by cloud providers, but creating a coherent architecture based on all of these becomes a fundamental problem. Once you're beyond a certain scale, a certain operational maturity you want, it's very hard to just put together 14 different tools and say, hey, this is going to be my operational framework. Upstream, go manage them. It's going to be an extremely hard problem. This is the problem we are trying to simplify and say, how do we reduce the tool sprawl where you can actually create this architectural blueprint where any cloud region can talk to any cloud region, any VPC can talk to any VPC. And we take that to the application layer where if you are actually operating at the application layer and say that, these are my production applications, and these need to go talk to my production databases. How do I make it happen? And these are my B2B partners, and they all come and join my network. And how do I securely provide access to my critical applications at an application layer? Right? I cannot be building an IPsec tunnel to them. I cannot be building a BGP route to them. At the same time, as a cloud network engineer, I'm expected to provide secure access to all of my B2B partners. Very, very critical problem with large banks, financial sectors, healthcare, they all work with thousands and thousands of partners. They're all in the cloud now. The secure framework of interconnecting these partners is becoming a crit critical problem. And not all can be solved by just building routes and tunnels. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Lastly, observability. Let's say you figure out how to connect them, how to secure them, you've got a great policy. When things go wrong, which happens pretty much every single day, do you have the right tools to figure out where exactly is the problem? Is it the underlay? Is it the overlay? Whose overlay it is? Is it the first mile? Is it the middle mile? Is it the last mile? Is it the network? Is it the application layer? These are fundamental questions which can take hours and days if you don't have the right framework, right level of visibility, and then right tools to tell you where should you look at. So this is the landscape we operate in as we go through the architecture, the components. Just keep in mind that this is the problem, challenge, set of challenges we're trying to solve. If I even abstract this out, hey, cloud networking is a broad term. Just tell us exactly what in cloud networking do you solve? We categorize them into two broad categories. First one, saying what happens within the cloud? When I say within the cloud, it could be 
AWS and Azure, Azure and GCP, or within AWS multiple regions. Or this also means your data center, AKA private cloud, kind of the east-west traffic pattern, where a set of business units are familiar with AWS, they started with AWS, that's what they use, a couple of regions in AWS. And then the other BUs, they are maybe ML focused for whatever reason, they're all on GCP. Now, as a cloud network engineer, you got to figure out how do you make all of them talk to each other? We're not talking about a hey, single application is getting dissected into multiple clouds. We're not seeing that a lot, but what we're seeing a lot more is for multiple reasons, the application corpus is spread across multiple clouds, including the data center. Just making them securely talk to each other at scale is the first cloud networking problem. When you talk about that, you see this box inside them. We have VPC, which are network endpoints. Say, so how do I make VPC one talk to VPC two? That's like your IP routing, but at scale. But more importantly, you get into an application endpoint. The second box here is an application endpoint. These are FQDNs inside those VPC. A single VPC can have a ton of those FQDNs. Only certain applications are supposed to talk back to the database. Or only certain applications can be exposed to your B2B partner. If you simply say that, hey, go build a tunnel into my VPC, you could do that. But then making sure that they can only talk to the secure endpoints, you're managing multiple levels of security ACLs, IP policies. If you thought managing five data centers was hard, this is going to be a nightmare, right? So we abstract it to a different level where you can talk application specific language and then say that this app can talk to this app. That's pretty much it. Lastly, PaaS services or even SaaS. We work with customers, cloud networking team that say that, hey, I was thinking I'm supposed to just manage this VPC. Now they throw PaaS at me. Think of Amazon S3. Your application teams need to go securely talk to S3 buckets or your RDS database or Snowflake, which is kind of provided as a SaaS service, but you want private link, meaning you don't want to come over the internet where your crown jewel of application needs to go talk to Snowflake or some Prometheus for monitoring and whatnot. Do you really want to expose them as just public endpoints or how do you keep it entirely secure but nobody else can see the application, but your application teams can go talk to the Snowflake endpoint or any other past services. That is a cloud networking problem. That's the definition we're trying to broaden and say that when you think cloud networking, do not think just VPC, routing, tunneling, transit gateway, I can terraform this, call it a day. That's where many start, but soon they realize that networking means making sure that you have an application layer network as well. You have a network that can understand this PaaS and SaaS services. So that's all about what happens within the cloud. What about to the cloud? This is another broad set of problems. Think of users. When I say users broadly, this could be your own employees as enterprise. This could be partners like I talked about, or this could be external users, your end customers that need to connect back to your application securely. And the traditional way is I'm gonna build a VPN tunnel to the virtual VPN gateway or to set of firewalls and then put some FI load balancer and call it a day. Now, if we have regions, we had one customer that had 24 regions, their applications are truly globally distributed as a global conglomerate. How many VPN tunnels can you build here? And then from branch to cloud, many of them are settling on this architecture where, hey, I'm going to go to Equinix, Megaport, and I'm gonna get a bunch of this direct connect express stuff. Great, that solves your underlay. Once you have this great underlay, 10 gig, 40 gig, you name it. The problem starts once you start to write your routing policies, on who can talk to who on top. Do you really want to take it back to the days of BGP and say, hey, I'm gonna run 4,000 BGP peers, some hub and spoke topology, put some VR of segment them, or is there a much more modern way where once you got this great underlay, can you abstract it to a level that you have a single dashboard, go, go build this multi-region, multi-cloud transit architecture. So that's the to the cloud and kind of um, in the cloud networking. The last aspect of to the cloud is what's known as you know, zero trust word, word is abused a lot. But the principles of zero trust, we really think about it. Compared to VPN, when you are the cloud network engineer, you have to provide secure access. Really want to make sure that that partner is indeed the right partner, or that customer is indeed the right customer. Integration with IDP, that way you're not building an IP-based tunnel. You're really thinking of an user-oriented overlay, which can really understand the user, work with the identity provider, figure out what type of context they're coming with. Context here means what device, what country. You really got to understand your network stack in the cloud, got to understand all of these contexts before it gives access to your crown jewels in the cloud. So our definition of to the cloud networking, where it has to understand all this context only then provide access. It's all built into the stack. You don't have to go to, you're not fans of multiple terms like SASE, you got to go to a SASE stack and whatnot. Think of the problem 
that needs to be solved. If your networking stack can understand all this context, why do you really need multiple other solutions and put them all together? So these are fundamentally two broad problem spaces. Here is one market architecture slide. I promise the team that we're not gonna have more than one market architecture slide from this point on, it's all gonna be demos and stuff. Really wanted to show you the layers we think in terms of it. That way the demos, you see that, hey, what is in the network layer? What is in the application layer? What are the traffic patterns? So the, the bottom most layer, as you see, is multiple cloud providers we work with. These are all our partners. We go to market with them. We are in their marketplaces. You can go to AWS, Azure, GCP, other clouds. And then just say that I want a Prosimo stack to be spun up in this region. So they all become um, our hosting places, right? Where our stack could be brought up in a few minutes. Then comes what we call as the network stack, the network layer, which is the foundational connectivity of how do I interconnect all these cloud regions using the underlay that I got? The underlay could be a simple internet. The underlay could be an express route, direct connect, Nequinix, Megapod, you name it. Using all these underlay, can I build a foundational network transit segment my networks, let's say productions, staging, however you want to segment them, write the right network layer policy, which network segment can talk to which network segment, and leverage cloud native as much as possible. Where if AWS got very good hub and spoke topology with transit gateway, we don't intend to replace them. That's something you will see more and more throughout the demo where we are not here to replace any of your foundational cloud native services that you got. We leverage them, we build on top of them. Same thing goes for Azure vWAN, a Google Cloud Router, or a private link, and so on. We leverage them, build on top of them. That way, it becomes easy for you to consume them. So that's the network layer stack. What you're attaching to the network transit is your VPCs and VNets and your data center networks, sometimes your colos and whatnot. That becomes a network transit. Once you have that foundational connectivity solved, now we are really getting into the advanced mode, where now your DevOps team is coming to you and saying that, hey, I want to attach my PaaS endpoints, SaaS endpoints all the examples I gave a few minutes ago. Now that becomes the application transit. You could onboard them as applications into the fabric. This is my FQDN1 called uh, say s3.acme.com. This is my FQDN2, which is rds.acme.com. Uh, you onboard them and write policies on which apps can talk to which apps, what level of performance they should have, what level of visibility you want. All those could be written as policies at the application layer. It is the same data path stack. That's a stack that you go deploy in the cloud but that can be working at layer three if you want to start there, then elevate them to layer seven anytime you want. Then comes the traffic patterns. What type of traffic pattern do you want to enable that for? User to app, app to app, network to network, network to app. These are all common traffic patterns. You got to enable them, that all becomes on top. And why do you have to do all this? Yeah, question. Now, does this reduce the need for like a service mesh or? Service mesh is a type of application that you could onboard okay. as well. Okay. Would you use this in conjunction with this or does this? We use this in conjunction with that. Like okay. We are partners with, for example, HashiCorp console. We got a bunch of the service meshes running where each service mesh is taken care of with console or an Istio or whatever it is. Those are all FQDNs you could onboard. Eh? This is a mesh service that's sitting in AWS East that needs to go talk to another mesh service in, let's say, Azure West, right? Our gateways are sitting in the middle, make that service to service communication happen across cloud, across region as well. <laughs> to work with vSphere networking? Absolutely. So if you've got a, a vSphere stack and then that's where uh, you're deploying all of your, uh, let's say data center or if you're running VMware cloud on AWS type. For us, those are all FQDNs. We are agnostic of what hypervisor layer you're working on. So we can onboard those applications running on vSphere into this as well. Both on-premises and in the cloud. That is correct. The outcomes, um, essentially why you're doing this in terms of how do you reduce again um, the attack surface? How do you kind of improve the uptime for these applications? And more importantly, improving the infrastructure rollout time. As you see, Eric's demo in a few minutes in terms of the Net DevOps framework, what literally used to take, we actually uh, demoed this to several customers, what used to take several weeks to figure out all of these, they all have become pipeline now. You click a button, it goes and builds this multi-region fabric of sorts, onboards the application, onboards the networks, and then it can be integrated to the CICD framework. So that's a demo we're going to talk about. It's all about how do I reduce the time to market for my application team? That way they're not waiting on me for weeks and weeks to figure out, oh, when is this new region coming up? How can I connect back into the fabric? Or if something goes wrong, how fast can you troubleshoot? So those are the outcomes we are after here. Uh, so this, this is Nathan's question. Is this, this is all software or is this hardware and software? This is all software. Okay. There is no hardware in this. This is all deployed in cloud regions as gateways. But the whole part of how do you bring up this fabric, we're going to show that in a few minutes. Okay. 